having a look today at what are radians or what is a radian. So first and foremost, a radian is another way we measure an angle. So we might measure height in metric units as 1.8 meters or 180, 180 centimeters, or we could measure that um, in empirical measurements, calling it six foot. They're the same length. That's the first thing to acknowledge. So if we're measuring an angle in radians uh, or degrees, well, that's just two different ways to measure the exact same thing. Radians have a heap of applications to them when we start doing calculus. When we start finding areas under curves, they give us much nicer and neater values than degrees do. For things like angles of elevation and 3D trig problems and bearings, degrees are better. They're easier to work with, they're a little bit more practical. But as soon as we get into real nuts and bolts mathematics, we want to be using radians instead of degrees. So um, we often use pi as a reference point. You'll see why in a second. Uh, it's based on a unit circle. It's how we find what a radian is. And a radian, as, as a definition, if you'd like, this is the definition of what a radian is. Okay, a radian is the angle size such that the radius and arc length are equal on a unit circle. Well, it works on any circle, in fact, but a unit circle is the one we base that on. We've got a unit circle here. And what we're looking for, if this has got a radius of one, as I said, this does work with any circle, but a unit circle is just the one we, we um, we base this on. So what I'm looking for is trying to make this length here, the radius, the same as this arc length when we get down and make a sector that way. So this is our arc. I've inadvertently drawn what appears to be a Pac-Man type person, not at all my intention just the way it goes. Um, we want to try to make this arc equal to one because that's what the radius is equal to as well. Okay. Now to do that, what we need to say is, well, if I'm going to go all the way around this circle, if I'm going to go all the way around this circle. I'm going to have uh, my angle is going to be 360 degrees. And at the same time, all my arcs around the circle, if I go there, I go another one there and continue on with these one unit arc lengths. What I'm going to find is my circumference. Okay, I'm going to go all the way around the circle and I'm going to end up with 2 pi. So I've got 2 pi r where r is 1. My circumference is 2 pi. So what I need to in fact do here is to say, all right, well, what I've actually got is 2 pi arc lengths. Okay, and I've got 360 degrees. So to find out how many degrees would be. Uh, would give me an arc length of one, I need to say two pi is equal to 360. Or to find what one of these I could say is uh, one arc equals 360 over two pi. Now, if you go put that in your calculator, you get approximately 57 degrees. Now that is what a radian is, okay? Or the other way to put it, our key conversion factor is not in fact, oh, well, it's about 57 degrees. We actually use that 180 degrees is equal to pi in radians, okay? Okay, 180 degrees is equal to um, pi radians, or that, that, and that just, by the way, comes from this statement right here, where two pi equals 360. We just divide both sides by two and we, equal, we get pi Pi radians equals 180 degrees. So that's what a radian is. This angle here subtended at the center so that I end up with a radius and arc length that are equal. You'd see how to work on any circle as well. If the radius was 10, we'd just make the arc length 10 and the circumference would be 10 times bigger and so on and so forth. It would all boil down to the same facts that 180 degrees equals pi radians or one radian is about 57 degrees. And if you count up how many times 57 will fit into uh, 180, it's three times with a little bit left over. That's what pi is, okay? It's three and a little bit. It's not almost that, it's exactly that. We're gonna practice some conversions here to go from degrees to radians and radians to degrees. We can do this e either way, doing two simple steps. And the steps are the same, but in reverse, depending on which way we are going. So if I want to go from degrees to radians here, I divide by 180 and I multiply by pi, okay? That's essentially because we've got this number here, we've got our, our number of degrees, we wanna get it into a number of radians. Now we know that 180 degrees 
He is three, a little bit, 3.14 radians. So 150 degrees, I'm expecting that's about two and a half, nearly three radians. Okay, so that's going to be a, what our ballpark figure is. If I go and put that in my calculator, I end up with 150 over 80, which comes down to 5 over 6. Now, if we put that in our calculator, 5 over 6 times pi, we end up with 2.61 or 2.62, actually. But what our, what our better answer is, in fact, is to leave that as a fraction. So that one of the advantages of uh, using radians instead of degrees is we can be far more exact in a simpler way. So if I actually simplify that fraction of 150 over 180, get 5 over 6. And rather than putting the pi into my calculator, I could say that's 5 pi over 6 okay, in radians. Now, either one is technically correct, but we should have that as an exact value where we can. Okay, the exact value there is always better, so we've got 5 pi over 6. For our second one here, we've got 72 degrees. Now, again, I'm going to divide by 180, and I'm going to multiply it by pi. 72 degrees, I'm expecting it might be about 1.5 radians, okay, because how many 57s go into 72? Well, there's definitely one and a little bit more, maybe about another half. Let's see what happens. I end up with... 1.257 to three decimal places there. Or again, as my fraction, it would be two pi over five. And again, how I've gotten that, I simplify that 72 over 180, that gives me two over five. And then I simply write pi on top because I'm multiplying by pi. Those two numbers here, by the way, these two numbers are exactly the same. Okay, they are exactly the same numbers. Uh, we've, we've just got one in exact form and one in rounded form. It's like me saying, well, the answer is root 2 or it's 1.41. Uh, well, the, the root 2 is a better answer, but the 1.41 is also correct unless I'm asked to give it as an exact value. I'm going the other way this time. So I'm going to do my same two steps, but I'm going to do them in reverse. This time I'm going to multiply by 180 and I'm going to divide by pi. Now for our first one in particular, where I've got an exact value here, dividing by pi simply removes the pi, okay? Where if, if we've got pi over something in our answer or um, two pi over something, three pi over something uh, in our angle to start with, if I divide by pi, it means I'm going to get a nice answer, okay? It means I'm going to get an exact number of degrees. So by doing this, I end up with, um, well, it's, it just comes down to 180 over eight, which if I simplify that becomes 22.5 degrees. Nice exact value there. Now the 2.37, however, is not going to be as pleasant. So this time I'm going to divide it by pi and multiply by 180, expecting my answer to be a little bit messy. And I end up with 135 degrees and 47 minutes. That's the nearest minute there. Okay, so if I'm going from degrees to radians, divide by 180 and multiply by pi. Going from radians to degrees, divide by pi, multiply by 180. Trying to keep things as exact values wherever possible. Okay, we had three of our four examples here that came out pretty nicely. Uh, and of course, that fourth one, we really couldn't help it. It had to end up being a little bit messy. We could write that as a fraction if we'd like, but it's not going to be a whole lot of value to do so. Looking at our exact values here, we've got the exact same exact values uh, in radians as we do in degrees. Uh, they're obviously just in their radian form instead of their degrees form. So we know that 30 is equal to a half. We also know that cos 30 is equal to root 3 over 2. And 10 of 30 is equal to 1 over root 3. Well, to get those three into radians, all I really need to do is go and say, well, 30 degrees is what in radians? Okay, so I'm going to take that 30 degrees, I'm going to put it over 180, divide by 180, I'm going to multiply it by pi. Now, 30 over 180 comes down to 1 over 6, which means in radians, 30 degrees is pi over 6, which means that I can just say sine of pi over 6 is a half. And cosine of pi over 6 
is root 3 over 2. And 10 of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. Now, our uh, three uh, acute exact value angles are going to be pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. Okay. Now, the, the trick here is to recognize that the angles get bigger as we move along and the denominators get smaller. Okay. Because pi over 3 is bigger than pi over 6. Okay. And of course, these represent 30, 45 and 60 respectively, the, the exact values are no different. So the exact values for um, for pi over three, sine of pi over three is, is root three over two, cosine of pi over three is a half, and 10 of pi over three is root three, just as they would be for sine, cosine and tangent of 60 respectively. Um, we just do them in radians instead, okay? Now, um, the other one I'll add in there as well is for 90 degrees, for 90 degrees, uh, we use pi over two. Okay, because that's half of uh, one radian, more well, half of pi radians. Okay, um, so it's not half of one radian. Um, but those are our key exact values. And zero just remains as zero. Okay, we'll have a look uh, next at um, how we deal with these when they are beyond 100, but beyond 90 degrees into the second, third and fourth quadrants. So we've got our four quadrants here. Uh, quadrant ones where everything's positive, sine, tangent, and cosine positive in quadrants two, three, and four, respectively. And we know that in, in uh, our second quadrant, we find our related angle using 180 minus. In our second quadrant there, uh, it's 180 plus theta. Uh, and in our third quadrant, it's 360 minus theta. And of course, if I, if, if I gave you the uh, angle in quadrant three, you could, um, you could go and find the acute related angle. You could go find what it would be in quadrant two or quadrant three um, and so on. Now, this is really no different. This is really no different when we're dealing with radians here. We just go and change all these. From their angle measure to their radian measure. Well, we had 180 minus theta in the first, in the second quadrant. So 180 degrees is pi radian. So we're just gonna say pi minus theta instead. 180 degrees plus becomes pi plus theta. And 360 is two pi. So it's two pi minus theta here. Now as an example, let's say I took the, let's say I take 60 degrees. Okay, 60 degrees, which is up here somewhere which is pi over three. Again, I get that by saying 60, I'm gonna divide it by 180, gives me one over three, and I'm gonna multiply it by pi to give me pi over three. So how would I go find that in quadrants two, three, and four? Okay, well in quadrant two, I'm looking up here, that would be the equivalent angle in degrees of 120 by me saying 180 minus 60. In, in radians though, I'm gonna say that will be pi minus pi over three, which is a whole minus one third, two pi over three. Okay. And in the third quadrant, I'd say it would be pi plus pi over three, which is four pi over three. And in the, and in the fourth quadrant there, I've got two pi minus pi over three, which is two holes minus one third, which is five pi over three. Number skills and fraction skills have got to be pretty up to scratch to do this sort of stuff quickly and accurately. So there we have our three related angles to pi over three and quadrants two, three, and four respectively. And circuit in red there is how we go about finding those. Sine is still positive in quadrant two, tan is still positive in quadrant three, and cosine is still positive in quadrant four. So if I was to say uh, the cosine of five pi on three, well, I would say, well, which quadrant am I located in? I'm, I'm located in quadrant three, sorry, quadrant four. So that would mean my, my value would be positive. Well, what, what, what does that relate to? Well, that relates back to pi over three. And that means that the cosine of five pi over three would be one over two, okay? Because it relates back to pi over three, just like it would in degrees, and it's positive because we're in quadrant four. If I was to say, the sine of five pi over three, well, it would relate back to the same thing as pi over three, but it would be negative because we're in quadrant four. 
I hope this has been helpful. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, finding these angles in other quadrants uh, when we do our lesson on solving equations uh, in degrees and radians.